Hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is Scott Conklin. I'm the director of admissions. We're just going to give it one more minute here um, to let people enter the room and, and then we'll get started. Thanks for joining us tonight. All right, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, my name is Scott Conklin. I'm the director of admissions here at Episcopal High School. Uh, and we're excited that you were able to join us. Um, we're waiting for Mr. Stillwell, there he is, um, to, to jump back in. He's on the road traveling and uh, is able to join us from, from Raleigh. Uh, and it seems like he's having some tech issues, but um, we can, wait till he's cleared to come back in. But I just wanted to give you an overview of tonight and um, what to expect. We'll start uh, as soon as Mr. Stillwell's able to, to get in. Uh, we'll have him welcome everybody and, and talk a little bit about Episcopal High School. Uh, and then we're gonna hear from our students. Uh, so we have seven uh, students who will join our student panel uh, and then we'll kick it over to a faculty panel. Uh, we'll talk briefly about the application process and, and what steps to um, think about as you're um, considering applying to Episcopal High School. And then we'll end the night with an opportunity to uh, hear from various uh, program directors, coaches, teachers, um, and areas of your interest. So those will be breakout rooms, um, and we'll describe how those will work. Um, Mr. Stillwell, I don't know if you're able to chime in here um if not can, there you go can you see me in here we can yep oh, Floor great. Is okay thank you I'm, I'm, i apologize for my technical glitch um i'm i'm beaming in virtually too i'm actually uh, uh traveling to connect with some of our current parents and and so it's it's really exciting that you all have been able to carve out this time to learn a little bit more about episcopal really appreciate uh, that effort on your part, and I, we really hope this program will give you a, a better feel for the school and 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 start the process of getting uh, to to know all those things that make Episcopal a very special place for for our st students to to live and to learn together. I uh, just a uh, I guess to to mention a few things as as we start tonight. There are. Uh, several aspects of Episcopal that make me especially excited to be there, not just as, as head of school, but also as a former parent. Our daughter had a wonderful experience at Episcopal, and I guess the things that really set the school apart uh, in, in so many ways are, one, uh, the fact that we have a chance to be a 100% boarding community, that all of our students and all of our adults are here living together, and the relation, strength of the relationships and the strength of community that, that grows from that uh, residential experience is incredibly powerful, and it enriches the learning experience in so many ways. And I think another thing that's really special about Episcopal and important is the fact that while we are, are fortunate to have a remarkably beautiful campus and wonderful facilities uh, where we can go to school each day, just outside of our gates, we have this incredible classroom of Washington, D.C. And I think that really brings the, the learning to life in very powerful and engaging ways for our students and allows our teachers to think very creatively about their curricula uh, across the, the program. And, and, and then I think for us, the fact that we're able to, to have the, the, the ties that we do um, with our Episcopal identity and our, our focus on not just helping our, our students become, uh, to strengthen their academic skills, but more importantly, to make sure that we're developing their strength of character and the, the emphasis that we place on 
the, the development of ethical leadership and our focus on personal honor and integrity that comes from our honor system. Those are at the heart of, of really what makes this a, a very special place. And, and I hope tonight in the program, when you hear from the students and when you hear from the adults, um, a, a lot of those features will come to life in a more powerful way. But again, thank you all so much for joining tonight. And as you go through this process, remember that we're all here to help you in any way that we can. So have a wonderful evening. Great, thanks, Charlie. Um, safe travels. And with that, I'm gonna kick it over to Mrs. Taylor uh, and our student panel, um, so they can talk about their time uh, at Episcopal and also have a chance for you to ask them questions. Um, so Mrs. Taylor, kicking it over to you. All right, perfect. Thanks, Scott. Um, my name is Ashley Taylor. I'm the Dean of Students here. Um, I also advise upperclassmen, teach an elective in our science department, um, coach our lacrosse team. So hopefully I'll see some of you later on in the breakout rooms as well. Um, and I am here to introduce the stars of the show, which are our seven current students um, who are here to introduce themselves, talk a little bit about their time and their experience at Episcopal. But most importantly, they're here to answer your questions. Um, so if there are things that are on your mind that you want to hear straight from the students, um, please feel free to use the chat and I will do my best to um, ask them as many as we can in the time that we have. Um, so students, why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell us your name, uh, your grade. Why don't you tell us what grade you came to Episcopal, um, where you're from, and then maybe just tell us like a few things that you're into here, a few things that you, you're, you're super excited about at Episcopal. And I'm going to let you guys just kind of jump in. Um, I, I can start. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Andrew Lehman. I am a senior here. I came last year as a new junior. Uh, I'm from San Francisco, California, and I play lacrosse, and I'm co-president of the Episcopal Motorsport Club. I can follow. I was also a new junior. Um, I'm Anna Scott Arnold. I'm from Denver, Colorado, and I'm a senior this year, so I was a new junior during COVID. And I am on the honor committee and a monitor, and I love all sports, so I do field hockey, and I do lacrosse with Ms. Taylor. I'll go. My name's Hadley Applegate. I'm from Lexington, Kentucky. I came to Episcopal as a freshman, and I'm currently a senior. Um, I'm on the field hockey team here. I'm also uh, serving as the head monitor this year, um, and I'm a tour guide too, so I hope to see you guys. I can go. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll go first. Hi, my name is Benny Wong. Um, I came as a freshman and I am a junior. Um, I am a prefect, so I live with the freshmen on the freshman dorm and work to um, make their lives as comfortable as possible. I'm also the editor of the editorial section of the school newspaper, um, and I'm also with our school soccer team in the fall and in the winter and in the spring and with the school theater productions. All right, I can go. Um, hi, I'm Banks Kraus. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, I'm a current junior, but I came when I was a freshman, so this is my third year. Um, I'm a prefect, so I live on Anderson, which is the freshman girls dorm. And then a bit of things that I do around here is I'm the secretary of the German club, one of the vice presidents for the history club, and I do light design for the school productions. I can go. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Sydney Hopkins. I'm a junior. Um, I came here last year as a new sophomore. Um, I'm from Princeton, New Jersey, and like Banks, I'm a prefect, so I live on the freshman dorm. I'm the co-treasurer of the BSA. I run track. I play the flutes. And yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Kofi, Kofi Ejin. I'm a junior. I came here my freshman year and um, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Not sure if I said that already, but yeah, I play the sax. Um, I'm also a prefect. I live in a freshman dorm, serving as like the supporting beam for the freshmen. And um, yeah, excited to talk to you guys today. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys. Um, why don't we, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat quite yet from our visitors. So why don't we start with 
Uh, Mr. Stillwell referenced this. Could you guys talk a little bit about what our Washington program looks like and how that works into your life here? Um, let's start with sort of the academic piece. So maybe you could jump in and talk about a flex block that you've done this year um, and maybe explain how that works too, just so the new students have a sense of what that looks like. Anyone want to want to kick that off? I'll start. Um, so we have something called Flexbox here at Episcopal, and that's when a class, uh, our teacher can take us into DC or into um, Arlington or Alexandria, and we get to really learn by experiencing and doing. So, for example, I'm in um, uh, history of food, and we went to a, a local farm and learned about how their farm operates uh, a few weeks ago, which was really interesting. And then my advisory took a trip to go see the COVID flags that were only up for a certain period of time. So we get to do a lot of hands on learning here, which helps enrich um, our experience. And it's also just a fun break in the day and it, it's part of our class. So we're not missing anything while we're out in DC. Awesome. Thanks Hadley. Anyone else want to give an example of a flex block that they've done so far this year? Um, I can. So my English class I'm taking first semester is individualism in American literature. And so one day, a few weeks ago, we went to FDR's memorial and kind of looked at what, what tones of communalism and like collectivism there were in the, in the memorial and the architecture and the, the artwork and they compared that to Teddy Roosevelt's uh, memorial on Roosevelt Island and kind of the individualism uh, imagery and stuff like that. That's awesome, Andrew. Is there one more person who wants to jump in about a, a DC flex block? Go ahead, Kofi. Uh, yeah, so um, <clears throat> a couple weeks ago, uh, me and my history class went to the um, National uh, African American Museum of History and Culture, uh, or the yeah, National yeah. That <laughs> we went there a couple weeks ago while learning about the um, sort of history of um, Black people and African Americans in uh, well America or in like different areas during what the transatlantic slave trade. So like we dug in to like the uh, sort of things that happened and um, learned about sort of like everything that had to do with the. Uh, era at the museum. So it was pretty interesting learning about that while, uh, or going to the museum while learning about that in class. And uh, tomorrow I'm actually going on a, um, a Washington program experience to Mount Vernon. So looking forward to that. That's great. Thank you guys for jumping in. Um, what about what made you all choose Episcopal? So we've got people who may be tuning in for the first time to learn about what life is like here. You guys have gone through that process before. What was it at the end of the day that made you choose Episcopal? Go ahead, thanks. Um, so for me, part of it was just like the community. I remember the first time that I toured, um, it was actually over the summer. And when I was walking around, I met Mr. Lee, who used to work in admissions here. Uh, and he just stopped. Uh, he was walking his dog and he stopped and he talked to me and we had like a solid five, 10 minute conversation. And I just remember that really vividly and it was really nice. And then I came back and I did like an official tour during the school year. And I just remember the person I shouted was really nice and all the classes I sat in with were just amazing. Um, and like the community is definitely something that's like on a next level here because like everyone kind of knows each other and even if you don't know each other you're still like saying hi to each other in the hallways and it's just it's really nice Go ahead, Sydney. um for me it was the variety of perspectives and just being around people from all walks of life all over the world um who've had a bunch of different experiences and being able to learn from them and those are your peers and you're learning and growing together in this like awesome place that's what made me choose this For me, one of like the main sort of influences that uh, sort of governed my decision to coming here was the Washington program. Like it always interests me like how the school uses um, their sort of like surroundings and their environment to like their advantage and like an extension of the classroom. So that was pretty interesting. 
Additionally, I think that being in a 100% boarding school, I didn't realize how important it was until I got here. And it's in, that includes the students and the faculty. So if I have, if I need help on my math homework and I miss office hours, I could contact my teacher and they sometimes will even like have me over for dinner or for, um, and this access like to your teachers and students is so much easier than it would at day school. All right, that's awesome. I'm, I'm getting some questions about the freshman experience. So what it's like to come in as a ninth grader. Um, and Benny, I'm wondering if I can put you on the spot since you came in as a ninth grader and you're a prefect now on our ninth grade boys dorm. Can you talk a little bit about sort of what we do to help onboard freshmen and sort of what a typical day for our ninth graders looks like? Benny, I'm actually having trouble hearing you. Are you, are you, I can't hear you right now. Why don't you try, why don't you try logging off and hopping back in? And I'm gonna see if maybe one of our other prefects could talk a little bit about life on the ninth grade dorm. Uh, I'll take a stab at it. So, um, all the freshmen live together um, on either Anderson or Hummel, the girls of the boys dorm, um, and then there are prefects and monitors who live there as well. And um, you wake up, there is breakfast sign-in, um, so you have to sign in between, I believe, 7.30 and 8 o'clock um, a.m., and that just makes sure that you're up, um, you're awake, you're ready for the day, um, you're getting to class on time, and then you go through your school day, um, you have afternoon options, you have sports, you have dinner, um, and different activities with your advisory. And then at um, from eight to 9.30 right now, um, we have study hall in Townsend, which is our um, English and history building. And so all the freshmen do like a mass exodus over there. Um, they're in rooms of about 10 to 12 students um, and they have study hall in there uh, every night, uh, Monday through Thursday night. Um, and then they get back on dorm. Um, there's pretty strict times um, as for when you sign back in, you're back in your rooms by 1030 in bed by 1045, um, and that's when lights out is. And so your day is pretty structured, um, but there's still some freedom and ability to move around um, and lots of support throughout the day. That's great. Thanks, Sydney. Would anyone else want to add either in your role as a student leader, how you help support freshmen now, or if you came in as a freshman, kind of what that those first couple of weeks on campus look like and how, how we onboard you was the word that was used. Go ahead, Hadley. Um, so I came to Episcopal as a freshman and I remember, you know, the summer before just being very freaked out about, oh, I don't, I feel like everyone's going to be fine and I'm just going to be the odd one out, but everyone's going through the same thing. You're freshman year and any new student, everyone is new. No one else has experienced this before. So you're with a group of people who are in the same boat of you, which is super, help, super helpful. And Episcopal knows that that's why there are all of these resources and why everyone's so friendly and wanting to reach out and help you. And we also have um, the academic support center, which helps kids uh, get used to the homework load in the school. I saw a question about um, someone coming from a public school. There are resources here because we know that kids coming into Episcopal have come from a bunch of different types of schools. So there's definitely the help here. At, you just have to reach out for it and use everything to your advantage. Um, and then we also have something called EHS 101, which is just during your free period, um, you'll have someone, a dean will come and talk to you about how to fill out a leave if you want to leave campus on the weekend, or someone from the health center will come to you and talk about um, how to schedule a counseling appointment. So it's not just like you're thrown in in the beginning of the school year and expected to know how to do everything. There are people who come and tell you how and guide you. Hey. Benny, I know you had your hand up. Did you want to add something in on that? Sure. Um, could you guys hear me now? Awesome. Thank you. I apologize for the previous technical difficulties. Um, as I, um, I, I was, as I, I was trying to say, um, a very big reason I, I chose to become a prefect was um, when I when I was a freshman. Uh, my prefect then, Justin, he helped me a lot in transitioning to this community. And I probably forgot to mention in my introduction, I am not American. I'm an international student. So um, the transition for me was arguably much more challenging. I was not with my family. I was very far from my family. I had to move to a completely new environment and um, to start anew. Um, but 
um, the prefix living with me, my roommate, and many other people helped this transition, and they were all very friendly people. And the school does a lot to support, and especially for international students, if there are any inter international students here today, we have every year a coordinator for international students that help organizes the trip from, from home, from other countries to campus, and also organizes um, um, places to stay over uh, longer breaks if that is necessary. And also our school um, organizes these um, weekend activities that students can take advantage of. So international students really aren't left out of, you know, left out of many things. And that's what really, uh, that's what really made the Episcopal community very much welcoming to me as well. Awesome, thanks guys. Um, okay, the questions are starting to come in. I'm wondering if someone can hit, um, who did not come as a ninth grader. So what was it like if you came as a 10th or 11th grader? Did you feel like that was a disadvantage or how did the school help integrate you when you didn't come in with the whole ninth grade class? Um, <clears throat> so I came in as a, a new junior last year during COVID and it was definitely a very unique experience. We were kind of confined to our dorms a lot of the year, doing a lot of like hybrid WebEx and then in-person learning. And so it was definitely challenging at some times, you know, you got this new new environment, especially with all these extra um, restrictions and like, you know, precautions you have to be taking into account. But I, I quickly overcame all my fears because I would just be walking probably with like a little bit of like, it was pretty probably easy to tell that I was a new student. I was kind of had this like fresh eyes probably. But I, teachers who I'd never met before were, and students to say, all alike, they would come up to me and be, introduce themselves to me, like, hi, what's your name? Where are you from? And stuff like that. And then as I saw them, like, in the hallways or something throughout the year, they would just make small talk, they'd get to know me better, give me little tips and tricks and stuff like that. And quickly, like, any fears or, oh, I would, like, sometimes I was really worried about when I came to school, like, oh, these kids have been together for two years. I'm not going to fit in. Like, that quickly was just not even a concern for me. Thanks, Andrew. Scotty, I know. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I can add on to that. I was also a new junior last year um, with COVID and everything. But I think what Episcopal does a great job of, and even though it can sometimes be scary, but our schedule is planned out so beautifully. And there might not be like so, like not a ton of time for you to like hang out in your room or like take a nap in the middle of the day. But this was helpful for, helpful, helpful for me because I was on the field hockey team and I was able to meet a lot of upperclassmen um, and even underclassmen as well on, on this way. And then also if you aren't a freshman, then you're um, put on to an upperclassman dorm, which is a 10th, 11th and 12th grade. And so then you can meet people all across different grades, which is also helpful um, during like your nightlife. Great, okay, I'm getting some questions about um, what we call afternoon options or extracurriculars, athletics. Could you guys talk a little bit about um, how that program works? So what it looks like, um, you know, our three different seasons, requirements, how you guys have chosen to fulfill that, that part of your experience here? Uh, I can take a stab at it if that's okay with y'all. Um, so, one of the requirements, like first and foremost, is you need six sports credits to graduate. So one season uh, equals like one sport credit. So it's often like recommended that like if you come in as a freshman, you take at least one season of sports. So you have some under your belt. Um, and then you can choose from like sports, but then you also have um, the fall play, the winter musical and the spring play. Or you could do something like afternoon art or afternoon music. Um, if you want to do something in the afternoon, you do have to choose between like sports or art, but during the class day, we also have art classes. For instance, my freshman year, I did theater one and two, um, and now I'm in choir, so I have choir um, for the whole year. And I also do tech alongside of that. So in the afternoon from like four to 5.45, six-ish, I'm in the theater, either working on lights, working on set, helping the actors with their lines. Um, and then in the spring, I'm actually like a catcher for the softball team. So I do that in the spring and I kind of have a way to balance um, both of my arts and my sports. That's great. Thanks, Banks. Um, would someone want to dive into what the weekends look like here? We've gotten some questions about Saturday classes, um, different types of activities that are offered. Someone want to talk about just kind of a standard weekend at Episcopal.
I'll go. Um, so our weekends here are really, really fun. There's always something happening on campus. We have a, an amazing activities committee that helps plan activities on campus and also off campus. So um, you can take one of the buses to the mall, or I remember a few years ago, we had laser tag um, on campus. There are DJs a lot. There's often movies, fire pits outside. Um, karaoke night. So there's always something to do. And if you want to do it, that's awesome. And if you don't want to do it, you can do your own thing. So there's a lot of freedom on the weekends, but you're also welcome to go off and go grab dinner with your friends. Um, and so we have we have some we have an app on our phones that we fill out and tell the school where we're going and we get it approved by an adult on campus. So the school always knows where we are. So we can't just leave without telling anyone. Um, they always know where we are and which is another reason why Episcopal is so great because there's stuff to do on campus, but off of campus in DC and Georgetown and Alexandria. So really you'll never find yourself just sitting in your room wondering what to do on the weekend. Yeah, I just like to add on to that. Like we have a whole uh, like department, I guess, called like the activities department, who's like, it's their job mostly to like come up with fun stuff to do for us on the weekend. And so there's always something to do. And then additionally, a lot of clubs will also try to do their own, like try to do something like they have outings, like motorsport club. We're trying to go go-karting one weekend. And so we're trying to raise money to go go-karting and take a bunch of people go-karting, which hopefully will turn out. But there's just really stuff like that. And if you have a really good idea and you're like, hey, I really want to try to get a bunch of people to do, you know, whatever it is, you can go to someone like get your buddies and go to a dean and they can approve it for you, like Hadley said, and then you can go do it. That's great. All right. Well, what about um, shifting gears to more of your academic experience? Um, you guys did a great job talking earlier about the flex block, but could someone talk about sort of the, the choices that you have in courses? Um, so sort of what it looks like when you come in as a ninth grader, what kind of classes you'd be taking? And then as you get older, kind of how, how you have a little bit more choice. Who wants to take a stab at this one? Go ahead, Sydney. I'll take a stab at it. Um, as a freshman, you have a pretty set uh, course schedule. Um, and there's you, when you um, come into the school, you take placement tests for your math and your language, I believe. And then um, you're placed in those levels accordingly. And then every freshman takes um, the same English and history classes. Um, and then as you as you get older, um, you have more opportunities to take electives, um, usually after your sophomore year. Um, every um, junior and senior takes an advanced English class, um, two, two courses over the year. And then um, you have their science electives, their history electives, there's math, um, and there's ability for you to just move up and down. And um, you can double up on science, you can double up on math, and then um, there's also an opportunity to take GOAs, which is Global Online Academy, and those are like some s selection of classes that aren't um, offered here, and they're more asynchronous, and they're um, online and things like that. So that's how the course load uh, works, and the, the school works with you a lot to put you in the um, right courses that are challenging you accordingly. That's great, Sydney. Thanks. Um, there's a follow up question here just about sort of the teaching style, the vibe of the classrooms here. Does someone want to describe? I see, see your hand, Kofi. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, it really depends on the class, but uh, let's see, the science classes and also the math classes tend to be more like traditional or like you guys are set up in a certain way, like facing towards the teacher. But a lot of our history and um, English courses involve like a lot of discussion. So like you're in like, um, I'm sure they got a table and you're like, talking about um so whatever you're covering for the day and the uh really like uh small teacher to student ratio um also allows you it's pretty significant because it allows you to um get a lot of like attention uh whether that be from like hearing feedback from your teachers or even just like getting your voice out in uh class discussion so yeah it's pretty uh the class ratio is pretty significant in your learning great what about um, relationship with faculty members? Would someone want to talk about um, maybe a challenge you faced where an adult helped you or the advisor program, sort of a place where an, an adult faculty member has, has made an impact on you? 
Um, I can definitely say, especially coming in as a new sophomore, um, there were a lot of worries. My advisor, Ms. Echo, um, she's awesome. And she was there every step of the way. Um, she was consistent in her communication and your advisor is like your counselor, if you will. And they, um, they talk with you and they also talk with your parents a lot. Um, just making sure that you're, you're okay. You're emotionally okay. You're doing well in your classes. Um, and they're just there for advice. And so she, Ms. Echo was one of the biggest, um, faculty that helped me. And then also getting to know the, the dorm team, like, um, on dorm, um, last year, like getting to know Ms. Williams, Ms. Amos, Ms. Ms. English. Um, and you really get to connect with your teachers because you're seeing them after the class day ends. Um, so I think that really st stuck out to me and um, having those adults in place to just ask questions um, was awesome. Anyone else want to take this one? Um, just adding on, I'd say also coaches provide a lot of good uh good support because a lot of them also have another role in the school they're either like a teacher or an administrator or something like that so you'll you'll see them outside of practice like in a normal day and at least for me uh coach conklin or mr conklin <laughs> um he's the lacrosse coach and so i really was able to talk to him a lot about some of my worries and issues um uh, and it's just nice to be able to see him, see him a lot around campus, like not in a coach and player setting, but more as just like a, like kind of mentor and student setting. All right. What about like just a great Episcopal memory, a great Episcopal tradition, something that, you know, maybe every year you're excited about. Um, I know for some of our students who came in last year, you've had two very different years at Episcopal. Um, but are, are there any things that you think are just super awesome that the kids should hear about before we wrap up tonight? Go ahead, Banks. Okay, so this is something that you will probably hear a lot about. Um, but every year we have uh, what we call the game, which is the uh, EHS uh, Woodbury Forest game. Um, and so we've been playing Woodbury Forest as kind of like our rival school and football for 120 years this year. Um, and it's a really big event. We host like a lot of like, uh, like we have a pep rally and everyone gets really excited for it. Um, and there are a lot of tra traditions behind it. But for me, it's like really, really important because I have family, like I've been going to the Woodbury game since I was like five. So I've just kind of like grown up with it and now being a student and getting to experience it as a student is really nice. Um, and everyone just gets like really, really excited for it. It's something that everyone looks forward to. And it's just like a really big part of campus. Awesome, Banks. We've got the game coming up in, I think maybe two or three weeks. All right, go ahead, Scotty. I was gonna add on to that. Um, for the girls, just this last weekend, we had the Seminary Hill Cup which is our, all the girls teams, which is field hockey, volleyball, cross country, and soccer, like JV and varsity, both um, play against our school that's like closest to us, which is St. Saint Saint Stephen's and St. Agnes. And we compete for this like cup and it's a great um, way. One thing that we haven't talked about is like a, the difference between open and closed weekends. And so last weekend was a closed weekend. So all students were required to stay on campus um, unless they saw their parents. Um, which for I think like four hours during the evening or something, but they the entire community was out there cheering for all the girls' sports, um, and it was just a really awesome event. Which I I love watching everyone um, come and give support to all the girls' teams. Go ahead, Hadley. Um, one of my favorite things is dorm games at the beginning of the year. So the first weekend at school, uh, we have something called dorm games, which is where each dorm, um, everyone on that dorm gets a shirt and you're competing in activities like egg toss, tug of war, just fun. It's like a big field day. Um, and it's really fun because it brings the whole dorm together and just sets the tone for the, uh, sp the school spirit. And I would say that's another really amazing thing about Episcopal is uh, the school spirit and supportiveness of everyone, not only in sports, but also um, like going to the theater production or art showcases. Um, students and faculty are really supporting each other everywhere throughout the school, which is amazing.
Um, one of my favorite traditions was May Day, um, even though I had it for the first time last year, and that was um, really fun. It's like right before um, final exams at the end of the year. Um, and it's almost like a field day and it was on uh, down our front drive and there was like shaved ice, um, like a slip and slide and water balloons and fun stuff like that. So that was one of my favorite things. All right, that's awesome. Um, I wish I think we could listen to you guys and hear about your experiences all night, but we're going to kick it back to Mr. Conklin um, and hear from our faculty. Um, but just want to give a big thanks. These are busy, busy students um, with lots on your plate. So thank you guys for taking time to chat with everyone tonight. Um, and I will hand it back to you, Mr. Conklin. Great. Thank you, Mrs. Taylor. And thank you to our awesome students for joining us tonight. I know they're heading off to study hall um, and great to get their perspectives. Now we're going to hear from our faculty. Um, so we have a number of our faculty members that will talk about various areas of um, their experiences at Episcopal and, and talk about our different departments and, and opportunities. This will also be a time uh, where you can continue to um, put questions into the chat and our admissions officers and um, teachers can help answer those. Um, and with that, I'm gonna kick it over to Mr. Evil uh, to talk about our academic program. Thank you, Mr. Conklin. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Nate Abel. I've been at Episcopal for the last 13 years, um, and during my time here, I've I've done a little bit of a little bit of everything. Um, lived on dorm. I have uh, coached JV basketball, JV football, um, and I am an English teacher as uh, as well uh, by history. Currently, I am the assistant head for academics, um, and wanted to give you a quick overview of the academic program, kind of a, a bird's eye view, what we're doing in and out of the classroom. Um, and you heard some of the students talking about um, what we are doing uh, with DC this year. And this is a, a sort of new um, way of accessing the city. And so it's, a, it's a, actually a really um, exciting time for us um, because we are able as individual classes, as individual teachers to design experiences that fit in our classes uh, to get into DC and use the city to um, sort of expand the walls of the classroom. And we've done it in different ways in the past, but um, we've sort of redesigned our schedule and our, our program to be able to incorporate what we're doing with DC into the actual curriculum and the core academic experience. And so when students are going into the city, they are um, doing it as part of a lesson there is build up to the experience there is lead out from the experience um the the experience itself is part of what they're working on and and um it, it has changed the nature of of the, those sorts of experiential lessons so that we are all in a small group working uh on, on a meaningful project that is connected to what we're studying in the classroom um and Another thing that you heard from the students, sort of the general progression of study uh, throughout a student's time at Episcopal. In the ninth and 10th grade years, we have sort of standard uh, curriculum. Uh, the students will take generally uh, very similar courses as we get everyone uh, sort of on the same page in terms of skills and, and, um, and uh, certain content areas. Um, and then in the junior and senior years, students are able to really branch out and um, start to pursue individual interests and take um, any number of different courses um, in, their, in their area of interest. We actually offer over 140 different uh, classes at Episcopal. And so our, our course catalog is incredibly expansive. Um, we, we have over 30 advanced uh, classes as well. Um, and so the opportunities and the different options are, um, are, are really broad and expansive. We, we um, have six different languages. And as someone mentioned, we're also a part of uh, Global Online Academy, which allows our students to um, take courses through an online consortium um, in, in areas that we may not offer um, here. And so, you know, they're all different levels of study, um, you know, in, for instance, in math, it runs from algebra one uh, up to you know, linear algebra and multivariable calculus. Um, our computer programming, uh, advanced computer programming uh, course is very popular right now. 
But we also have interesting electives like advanced 3D modeling um, and advanced engineering that are a little more hands-on um, and a little more practical application of that um, uh, uh, computer science. And so um, a lot of really interesting um, and, and creative courses that our, our teachers design and um, that's sort of the last thing that I would say. I would say, you know, the the overall experience at Episcopal is so unique because students are interacting with their teachers in the classroom on these excursions into DC. They're sitting with them at at uh, lunch or dinner. Um, they're out with them on the playing fields, and these conversations that may start in the classroom sort of carry outside and will will be picked up on dorm. And um, students are really and truly learning all over campus. Um, and that relational piece as well is incredibly important. The teachers get to know the students and the students get to know their teachers in a way it's hard to replicate at other places. And so um, what I think is at the core of the Episcopal academic experience is not just the incredible array of, of uh, course offerings or opportunities in the academic realm, but also that relationship that students develop with their teachers um, for meaningful um, relationship and study as they're going through these, these formative years. So um, with that, I'm gonna wrap up and I will pass it off, I believe, to uh, Mr. Spears. Thank you, Mr. Ebel. I appreciate it very much. Good evening, good evening everybody. As, um... As Mr. Evil said, I'm the assistant head for student life, and I'm also a current parent of a 10th grader here, um, and I'm a ninth grade advisor um, and a 10th grade health teacher, um, and, um, and I'm excited to be able to just share with you a little bit about student life, the co-curricular pieces of the Episcopal experience that go right along with uh, the academic components that Mr. Evil was just talking about. Um, and the first thing I really want to stress is that, that this is a community built on relationships. Um, there are a host of experienced and committed educators who have chosen boarding school life and are so impressive in any number of ways. Um, and over a hundred of them live on campus and there are uh, somewhere around 50 faculty dogs. Um, and there are um, faculty members who love to tell bad jokes, dad jokes. I mean, um, this feels like a really good place. Um, just to ask you, you know, what do you call a young dog that doesn't bark? Um, that would be a hush puppy. Um, and I'll also talk about some of the community, the Episcopal community and, and the strong supports that students have here, right? And I'm gonna start with the formal medical supports that students have. Um, we've got a health center with 24 seven uh, that's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There's an experienced team of 10 nurses um, that's led by a director of health services. Um, and we have a full-time physician here, Dr. Humphreys, who leads um, that entire operation. Support for students also comes from 64 faculty advisors, five deans, three certified counselors, two chaplains, um, and a terrific team of, of dedicated dorm uh, faculty and dorm parents um, as well. Um, we think about community, we, we think about what we do in the afternoon, and some of those questions were answered by our students, but we've got a robust, robust athletic program, a robust arts program, outdoor activities, um, science, etc. lots of ways to be involved. Uh, I saw a question about food. This is very important in our boarding school community, right? There are three outstanding meals a day in our dining hall, including vegetarian and gluten-free options, full salad bar, full sandwich bar, um, student center with a grill that, that's serving snacks um, pretty much around the clock every day, uh, and some late night options. And we have restaurants nearby. There are times when students are permitted to walk to those um, and get some food as well as sometimes when students can actually do have delivery, uh, come to campus for them too. So, um, know that if you come to Episcopal High School, you're going to be eating very well. Um, there were some good questions about weekends. We've got over 60 student run clubs and the terrific committees that help us set up exciting and fun weekends for students who want to do things formally and fun and silly. Um, and also some stuff that's, that's uh, more serious and more enriching, uh, as well. And then if you just want to chill and be on your own, then, uh, all that stuff uh, is optional. Um, last couple of pieces I'd talk about are just our dorm life. Um, Episcopal is unique. You've heard about that. Washington, D.C., flex blocks. Um, we're 100 percent boarding in that all of our students live here on campus. Um, we've got eight dorms currently, four each for boys and girls. 
um, and, and wonderful adults who live there on dorm with them and teams of, of faculty who come onto the dorms, right? Dorms is where a lot of the, the lifelong friendships are forged, a lot of laughter, ping pong champions are crowned, movies are watched, video games are played. Um, again, a lot of laughter and a lot of joy in, in those little micro communities, those hallways um, on dorms. Um, and that's a, a particularly important part of the Episcopal experience. And coming in 2022-23, next year are a couple of more dorms. And I wanted to show a couple slides here, as well as a new uh, health and well, a new wellness center, where which will house, you know, I was just talking about our health center, our medical director, um, yeah, our doctor and our counselors, et cetera. And so these dynamic new buildings will add and enhance student programming. And those two new dorms that you see are going to um, are going to be terrific in the life of the school. But it doesn't mean we're expanding. Our student body isn't going to get bigger. We're just enhancing student programming and reconfiguring the way we live here on campus together. And so um, if you come to Episcopal, then uh, you might have the opportunity to live in one of these or one of the other dorms um, that you thought um, would be particularly good and fun for you. Um, during your time here. Um, and so uh, there's another important part of the, um, of the Episcopal experience and student life experience, and that's the spiritual life of the school. Um, and that's a good moment for me to turn it over um, to um, our chaplain, Rev C, to, to let you know about our commitment to our Episcopal values. Um, and I'll just close, though, by, by making sure that you know that um, if you want to stop Rev C, if you want to stop an astronaut's baby from crying, if you want to stop an astronaut's baby from crying, you rock it. You rock it. Rev Excellent. C, I'll turn it over to you. Excellent. Phil, your jokes have brought such life to me this year. I'm just so thankful for them. Um, hey, everybody. My name is Betsy Carmody. Folks call me Rev C. Uh, this is my eighth year here at Episcopal, and I serve as the head chaplain here. And uh, but I wear a bunch of hats too. I'm a dorm head on a 10th, 11th, and 12th grade dorm. I teach theology. I'm an advisor, upper class advisor. And this year I got to add a Episcopal parent to my uh, bevy of activities. So I currently am the parent of a ninth grade girl um, who uh, who lives with me here, here, but we're kind of on dorm. So it's all very interesting, but, um, but it's been a really wonderful and exciting year particularly in our spiritual life uh, segment of our time here at Episcopal, we, we have chapel three times a week and we have, were as many religious institutions last year, lots of streaming, lots of dependency on technology, but it has been amazing to be back in the space with students. Um, we're all masked, but I don't care. I'm just so happy that we're all in there and able to kind of gather as a community. And we really see our chapel time here as as offering community value. It's a time when we ask big questions about who we are and what we're up to in the world. Um, our chaplains focus on that in their, in their conversation through chapel talks, as well as our students who offer chapel talks regularly throughout the year. We, we sing together, masked. Um, I think we sing even better this year. I don't know whether my colleagues will agree with me, but after being told we couldn't sing for a year, we're like, well, we're gonna sing and you better watch out. So that part has been really fun. But we also have a number of awesome student performers like Benny and others who bring their talents to the chapel. And it's just an amazing place to really lift our, up members of the community throughout the week. Uh, we also have um, we have Sunday options, weekend options being in D.C. We're able to support a lot of different religious experiences for students, whether you're interested in getting off campus with your family or you're interested in trying out a new house of worship for yourself or um, attending our Episcopal service here on Sunday afternoons uh, or mosque or temple, all of those things. We have, we have a lot of close neighbors and relationships across the religious spectrum and, and like being able to connect students in that way as well. Um, and yeah, you have a chaplain. You'll actually have two chaplains. Um, Richmond Jones is my colleague. He helps with our service learning uh, program here at Episcopal. And he came on last year in COVID and he's like, I thought last year was good, but this is really great. And I'm like, yeah, it is. So um, we also we host guests from off campus who come and share time with our students as well through our chapel program, as well as we just had our um, second spirituality retreat a couple of weeks ago. Got to get out to a camp and conference center and just do a little focusing for students on 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 their spiritual selves and what that means to them. And we had a wide spectrum of uh, religious experience in the room. So it was it was actually amazing. It was amazing. I needed it too, and I didn't know I needed it too. But uh, 
but yeah, I'll be interested if you have any questions about any of that aspect of our life. It's fairly multifaceted and uh, I'll be in one of the breakout rooms so we can talk about it. Thanks, Betsy. Um, my name is Lewis Smith. I am the director of the Office of Community and Equity. I see where we are in mortal danger of running out of time. I'm going to try to go quickly so that I don't shortchange those behind me. Um, I just started my timer. Um, I've been here for nine years. I have five children. Three, two of them are here. One graduated in 2019. Uh, the two younger ones won't be running through here if all goes according to plan until 2037 and 2039. So that's a little ways off. Um, let me talk for a minute about uh, this Office of Community and, and Equity. It's my second year in the role, and it's a very purposefully named uh, office within, within the school, focusing on community and equity. And, and Betsy was just talking a little bit about community and how important that is to what we do here in terms of thinking about who we are and what that means. And that's really at the essence of everything that we do in my office. And our thinking is that you can't really have a strong community without also having a strong sense of equity and what that means. And so uh, let me just define it quickly. Um, equity is a little different than equality, but it's not guaranteeing, um, you know, outcome equality for everyone. It's not everybody gets a trophy. And when we, when I work with students, I sort of make that clear. Um, you know, you don't get a trophy unless you deserve a trophy, but let's make sure that everyone gets a fair chance to run the race. And that's really what equity is all about. But it's not all about competition because a big part of what we do is also about this sense of belonging. And that's really um, a huge, you know, DEI work, diversity, equity, inclusion, now has a B tacked on at the end. I'm gonna go over my timeline, but that's okay. And belonging, I think, is really the most important aspect of what we do. Um, everyone's got to feel that they have an equal stake to being here at Episcopal and that this community speaks for them and to them as much as it does for anybody else. And that doesn't mean that you're always in the majority. That doesn't mean that everybody agrees with you, but it means that you have a place where you can be proud of who you are and sort of stand tall in who you are and know that you'll have support from your community members, even if they are not exactly like you. Um, I'll just give a quick uh, sort of acknowledgement to you know the past I would say 18 months we've gotten a little bit of a reprieve in the news but you know we haven't forgotten about 2020 and all the social upheaval and all the things that were sort of laid bare by that experience across the country and in schools everywhere and that um, has been sort of an awakening in a way or at least a reminder of a lot of the work that we do and it drives a lot of our sort of programmatic directives and what we're doing here with students in terms of building that community. Um, I'll stop there because I could go on forever. Let me drop my email in the uh, chat window again because I did it earlier and that was premature. Um, LGS at EpiscopalHighSchool.org. If you have any questions about this or about any of this stuff, please don't hesitate to give me a call. I'll also be in one of these uh, breakout rooms, but I look forward to speaking with you if you have any questions um, or if you just want to talk. Thanks. And I think, uh, who's next here? Jen, I believe. I'm up. Hi, everyone. My name is Jen Fitzpatrick. I'm the Director of Athletics. Uh, this is my 15th year at Episcopal. And in addition to my role as AD, I serve as a girls varsity soccer coach and advise ninth grade girls. Uh, the slide you're looking at here gives you a sense of the breadth of our athletic program. Um, and we talk about our athletic program, we're really talking about more than just those 52 interscholastic teams and 19 different sports, um, but included in our offerings are interscholastic sports, intramural offerings, general fitness offerings. And every afternoon at Episcopal, the students are required to participate in an afternoon option uh, for each of the three seasons throughout the year. And for about 85% of our student body, that means earning athletic credit through uh, athletics in the afternoons. About 20% of our senior class will go on to compete at the college level, but we su uh, support a wide variety of offerings for students um, with varying levels of experience and ability. Um, athletics and athletic activity are very much a part of the fabric of what we do here at EHS. Uh, you heard some of the students talking about some of their favorite traditions and uh, the Woodbury football game, uh, Seminary Hill Cup, but it's just one more piece of life here at EHS where you get to see students supporting each other and in their different interests. Um, we want our interscholastic teams to be competitive, but we really want to do it the right way. And that starts with making sure that our programs have the resources they need to be successful. 
And if you come to campus right off the bat, you'll get a pretty clear sense that we've got some phenomenal facilities. We're lucky that most of our programs are able to train on campus and the ones that aren't, uh, things like climbing, crew, swimming, because we're in this metropolitan area have some really incredible options for off, train, off campus uh, training sites. Um, but beyond that, the most important resource that we have, and you will hear it throughout this evening and uh, throughout any visit that you will make to Episcopal is the people that work with our students. Um, our athletic department includes two full-time athletic trainers. We have a part-time strength coach, and this year we are thrilled to have added the position of college athletics advisor, um, a member of our admissions staff, also works specifically to counsel aspiring college athletes about the college recruitment process, and that's been um, a really significant addition for a lot of our students for whom that's a goal. Nearly two thirds of our 100 coaches are also full time faculty or staff members at Episcopal. Uh, so I think you heard earlier from Andrew about how we might be able to connect with Coach Conklin off the lacrosse field uh, as a mentor. And that's something we think is really important that there's a connection to a full time faculty or staff member on each one of our teams. Um, and so the lessons that are being taught in the classroom are extending to the playing fields or the courts. Um, to that end, I would say, as you work through the admissions process, please let us know about your different athletic interests. We're really eager to connect coaches and student athletes uh, with potential additions to our different programs. Um, and before I turn things over to Mr. Carter, I would um, preface my announcement of our director of the arts program by saying that what I really love about Episcopal is that our students are super supportive of each other and all of their different interests. And um, I think our departments work really well together to support each other. You see lots of athletes who one season will be playing a competitive sport and the next moving on to the play um, or in the daytime singing in our choir. And that's an important part of who what Episcopal is. Um, and we're eager to get to know all of you and all of your different interests. All right, Mr. Carter, you're up. Thank you, thank you. My name's uh, Mark Carter. I am the director or chair of the arts department and more specifically, the director of uh, instrumental music is my area. Uh, of expertise, but as everyone else has mentioned, we all wear different hats here. Um, I am also a parent of a uh, sophomore uh, this year, and I am a dorm head for a, a 10th, 11th, 12th grade boys dorm. Um, I also act as the uh, faculty advisor to the discipline committee. Uh, but let's talk a little bit of arts here. Um, I, I really appreciated what uh, Jen Fitzpatrick just said. We do. Uh, we share a lot of students, we share a lot of time together, and we support each other, which is one of my favorite things about Episcopal. You can be an artist, you can be an academic, and you can be an athlete all in one person. And we want you to be that. We want you to explore all of those areas. And in the arts world here, we give you a lot of opportunity to try many different things. Uh, you might have things that you already do, but you also might have things that that you've never had the opportunity to try and you think, wow, that might be kind of interesting to go into. So we do offer visual arts, performing arts and digital arts here at, at the Ainsley Arts Center. And you're gonna have a chance in a few minutes to actually talk with some of those faculty members who teach those specific areas. But I wanna just talk to you just for a second about the fact that some of the common areas in the arts world here is that you're gonna find extraordinary faculty members who want to get to know you, get to know you as artists, get to know you as people, and really take a journey with you as you learn and explore in their art medium. And they will do that right alongside of you because they are not just faculty members, they are actually uh, working artists that, that work here as full-time uh, teachers as well. And in the building, uh, we, we have 10 full-time faculty and staff um, to serve our artists on campus. And we also have around 17 adjuncts that come onto campus every week to provide private lessons in a variety of different areas of the arts department. So you have a lot of opportunities and things that you can take. Um, one of the students earlier highlighted how a lot of the arts classes are that, they are classes, they are built into the academic day. And so you are able to take arts during the day. And if you are an athlete for all three seasons, you can still take an art during the day and then be able to take athletics in the afternoon option. 
but we also at, uh, offer afternoon options here in Ainsley Arts Center. Um, there's a lot to talk about with the arts area. I will be around for the for the later uh, conversations in the breakout rooms. So feel free if you have any specific questions, uh, come by and see me or go see any of the other faculty members. But we hope to hear from you. We want to know what you want to know about, and we want to be able to welcome you here at any time. I think I'm passing this off to uh, Jeremy Goldstein. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. I apologize for being the one that takes us past eight o'clock. Um, but I, I want to thank you all for sticking with us and hearing um, about our great school, our great community, and all the great people. Um, I am the executive director of the McCain Ravenel Center for Intellectual and Moral Courage. And that's a long title for a center that holds all of the um, actually, we're involved in every department of the school, to be honest with you. Um, I'm also the chair of the theology department. I teach, I do uh, residential life as well. Um, so we all wear those hats. And you know, everybody mentioned that, but that's really one of the reasons why we come to Episcopal is that we get to have, um, there isn't a day that goes by that, that we're not having an exciting day. There's always a challenge, there's always fun to be had, um, and we get to where you get to shift to different roles. Um, in my role, I work with an already excellent faculty um, to grow and design um, fantastic teaching and learning opportunities using the resources of Washington, but also using the resources of programs that we've established over the years. Um, and I will just say this with just true conviction. Um, we're not a field trip school. We are a school that weaves the area into our curriculum. And there's a difference there. And, and field trips are generally passive. We ask our students to go above and beyond in their engagement. And I'll tell you a couple of the, the programs we have, aside from the Washington programming that we have during our flex blocks, which is fantastic. We've had over 70 trips into Washington DC all year in a pandemic, that's pretty exceptional, but we've already had a lot of connections with some great resources. Uh, we do service and civic engagement as well. We have a, a global program that runs with a lot of exchanges and partnerships with other global um, institutions. Uh, we have a leadership and ethics program that um, is a building curriculum through four years of high school where students get to learn a little bit more about decision making and ethical decision making. Um, and then we also hold a lot of McCain Ravenel Center Mondays, which are full days of experiential programming. Next Monday, we're doing that. Our entire campus of 450 plus students goes off campus together for deep learning. And it's not just for an hour, we're doing some deep experiential learning that will um, bring us back and allow us to reflect on that experience. And as Mr. Ebel mentioned, um, our faculty construct and build experiential learning like no other school. Um, we ask students to immerse themselves in environments that aren't familiar, and that's really an important part of growth. And one of the other programs that we have is the senior externship and the winter externship. And our McCain Ravenel externships are something we're very proud of, but our senior class finishes classes at the end of April, and they spend the entire month of May immersed in the workforce or in doing great things with great outside partnerships. And that's 120 seniors working with outside partners, outside supervisors, different bosses, working on deliverables of all sorts, anything you can imagine, we make it happen. And uh, the bottom line is, is that the McCain Ravenel Center is something that connects to our portrait of a graduate, all of our sort of mission and ideals. And in addition to that, it is a resource that um, commemorates the relationship between Senator John McCain, who was a 1954 alum, and William B. Ravenel, who was an esteemed educator. And we're not naming the center after the people, but we're naming it after the relationship. And that's really something that we focus on. How do we get our faculty and our students together in those learning environments as learners side by side? And we're very proud of that work. I'm looking forward to connecting with you individually in the breakout rooms. I won't take any more of your time and I'll hand it back over to the admissions team. Great, thanks Jeremy. And, and thanks to our, our amazing faculty. I know that's a lot of information that we just threw at you um, and there'll be more opportunities to learn uh, a, a little bit deeper about uh, these opportunities and, and questions that you have about our specific programs. Um, and we ended right at 8.05, amazing, uh, right when we were scheduled to, to finish. Um, I'm gonna talk briefly about the application process uh, just so um, you're aware of some of the, the requirements and also kind of the timeline. Uh, and then I'll turn it over to Mrs. Kim Sr. so she can talk about how we'll break out um, into the breakout rooms and have an opportunity to meet with our uh, teachers and program directors and, and coaches. But to talk quickly about the application requirements, we uh, do have two uh, common applications that we accept, uh, the Gateway to Prep Schools 
um, and also this standard application online um, through uh, the Enrollment Management Association. So either is perfectly fine. Um, you can find both of those on our website. Uh, we do require three recommendations from your principal counselor, um, your current math and current English teachers. You can also submit additional recommendations from uh, a coach, um, another teacher, could be a personal recommendation. So there are opportunities to submit um, up to two more uh, recommendations. Uh, we asked for a transcript from the last two years, so your current year um, and the year before. Uh, we do require standardized testing for students whose uh, first language is not English. Um, so that it can be done through the TOEFL, Duolingo, or IELTS. We are test optional uh, again this year. We were test optional last year. You do not need to submit an SSAT score. Um, if you have questions about that, uh, I encourage you to reach out to us directly, uh, one of our admissions officers or me, and, and certainly we can help guide you in terms of whether or not uh, you should submit uh, an SSAT score. Uh, interviews, uh, so we're doing those in person and virtually. Uh, it's been great having families back on campus for tours and interviews. I think most of our officers or all of our officers would say that this is the favorite part of our jobs is meeting you all. Um, these are fun conversations. Uh, you shouldn't be afraid of this. This is uh, really an exciting time to share what you're interested in um, to tell us more about yourself and also an opportunity to ask questions. Um, and so we, we look forward to those of you that have not had that opportunity yet. Hopefully. Uh, you're in the process of, of scheduling that we will interview all the way through the end of January. So there's still plenty of time. Uh, in terms of our dates, our timeline, our uh, application deadline is January 15th, uh, so still a few months away. Uh, affordability is, is certainly an important piece of this process, and for those of you that will be applying for financial aid, the financial aid deadline is February 4th. Uh, if you have any questions about the financial aid process, I encourage you to reach out to our Director of Financial Aid, Mr. Vincent Hodge. Uh, you can find his contact information on our um, financial aid website. Uh, and March 10 is our notification date, so that's when we announce our decisions, and then families have until April 10 um, to let us know if you're accepted, if you uh, choose to enroll at Episcopal. And we'll have revisit dates uh, set up in late March uh, for students who are accepted to come back, uh, have a little bit more of an in-depth experience, visit classes, go to chapel, lunch, um, hear from faculty and student panels, uh, have a Washington program experience uh, into DC, uh, which we typically have done on a Sunday night. Uh, so a really nice opportunity to dive in a little bit deeper to our, our school and um, learn those last pieces of information that are going to help you uh, make your decision. And lastly, I, I just want to put a plug in for our December 11th uh, open house, which we call our Explore Episcopal open house. Uh, we are planning on doing that in person um, this December. Uh, that's on a Saturday. And so that would include uh, sessions with our, our academic teachers um, where students are actually engaged in a lesson uh, with our uh, teachers and other prospective students. Uh, students can also sign up for um, different athletic sessions uh, and have clinics with our coaches, um, current players and other students. Uh, and also uh, an arts session where you get a, a deep look at our, our arts curriculum and, and get a, a nice tour of the arts facility. So we will be putting information uh, on that on our website in the next couple of weeks here, uh, and we'll continue to send email reminders. Uh, you see our contact information here. Any questions that you have, please reach out to our, our admissions office um, through email or uh, call, and we will uh, get to your questions. And the best way to experience Episcopal is to visit our campus. So uh, we look forward to, to getting those of you that haven't been on campus here um, in the next uh, couple of months. But with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Kim Sr. Uh, so she can explain how we're going to do these breakout rooms. I'll quickly say that um, these are optional. Uh, these are for you if you have more questions specifically related to Departments academically, uh, a sport that you're interested in, uh, the arts, Washington program, uh, lots of different choices, and you can bounce around from room to room. We will not come back um, to this space. So once you've kind of had all your questions answered, you can opt out. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you for for joining us this evening. We are honored uh, to have you considering Episcopal High School, uh, and we look forward to getting to know you uh, better throughout this process. So with that, I'm going to 
turn it over to Mrs. Kim Sr.